Welcome back to the show, everyone. Anna Kasparian with you. And joining us now is Democratic presidential candidate Cenk Uger. Cenk, pleasure to have you on the show. How are you doing? Thank you, Anna. I'm actually doing rather terrific because of the good news that we got today. That's right, that's right. We're gonna tease the audience a little bit with the good news, okay? So we're gonna get to that in a moment. But first, I wanted to actually talk a little bit about what you experienced in New Hampshire, which was pretty much the polar opposite of what you've experienced in Arkansas. But before we do that, I want you to also just briefly summarize your intentions with this presidential run. Because you really do have two objectives here, and I think it's important to lay that out. Yeah, so objective number one by a landslide is knock Biden down the race so we can beat Donald Trump. So it's not anything against Biden, although I now have a lot of things against Biden. But if I thought Biden could beat Trump, then I'm not worried about it. But yet another poll out today, Quinny Piak, he's at 37 approval, 59 disapproval. Mm-hmm. He's 22 points underwater. In almost every category from the economy to foreign policy, he's 20 to 30 points down in terms of approval versus disapproval. And on the border issue, he's 40 points down. So this is a guy who you remove the names Biden, Trump, any other name you want. No political analyst in their right mind would say that this guy has a chance of winning. His When I entered the race, I thought he had about a 10% chance of winning. Now I think it's down to closer to 5%, almost no chance at all. Well, and so it's just an absolute epic disaster. And think about how incredibly selfish he is. He said basically that he'd be a one term president. And now he's saying, no, I don't care. I want two terms. And my legacy as a two term president is more important. So you know what I did? I bought the URL selfishjoebiden.com. And now it redirects to my website, selfishjoebiden.com. So we got to knock the guy out of the race. This is insanity, total insanity. To go into a race against Donald Trump, who I think is a fascist, with a guy polling at 37%. So it's just basically saying we don't mind losing the election. So Cenk, before we go to your second objective for why you're doing this, I, I wanna just give you a devil's advocate argument that I've seen in the press over and over again. A spokesperson for the Biden campaign argues that you know this early in the election cycle, Even Obama didn't look so great in the polls compared to Mitt Romney. And this is of course the 2012 presidential election. People were concerned that Obama wouldn't win against Mitt Romney. I think that there are some significant differences in that case versus Biden versus Trump. But I'm curious what you think about that argument. Yeah, total nonsense. You see normal variations for any politician and certainly for any president, right? But when you look at the totality of the numbers, overall, Obama was fairly popular. There was a brief moment where he dipped into the low 40s, but it was a it was an aberration. It was not the norm. He was normally in the high 40s, whereas now Biden is in the high. 30s and dropping. Obama never got to the 30s. So if they're saying that they have the same numbers, that's just a flat out lie. That's why they're saying like this is a kind of Dick Cheney like logic. His numbers are in the general vicinity of Obama's. Obama's very, very, very nadir at his very bottom. Mm -hmm. So it's totally untrue. Second of all, Biden is down now 15 points from where he won in 2020, and he won barely. If of course you guys remember, 44,000 votes in three swing states, nearly lost electoral college, and he's down 15 points from there. Does it look like Obama and Biden have the same ability to mount a comeback? Obama had to mount like a five point comeback, which he was more than capable of. Joe Biden has to mount like a 15 point comeback. And he's shown no capacity for that comeback. All he's doing is sliding further down the polls. Now, his stance on Israel is also decimating his polling. Democrats have flipped on it completely. The whole country has flipped on it completely. And now that's also driving down his poll numbers. And and he doesn't even campaign. What's have you ever seen him campaign? Have you ever have you seen has anybody seen him in the last month or two do an attack against Donald Trump? Do say, hey, he's not a good businessman, he's not this, he's not that. Nothing, nothing. Has you have you has anybody seen him offer a policy proposal for next time around? 
nothing. So this guy says, I don't want to run, I don't want to campaign, I don't want to speak out against Republicans, I don't want to speak out against my opponents. My poll numbers continue to dive to catastrophic levels, but I'm not getting out of the race because I want a second term. He's now a massive narcissist, a total utter egomaniac. Get the hell out of the race. Jankforamerica.com. Beyond confusion in our members section writes in and says, I lost faith in Biden over the war completely, completely. I don't know who I'll vote for, honestly. And to be quite frank, I th that comment really does resonate with me. You know, Biden, up until his support for the brutal war that has overwhelmingly slaughtered children in the Gaza Strip. You know, he was a mixed bag. I saw parts of his administration that I liked. I liked the National Labor Relations Board. I, I liked the fact that he appointed Lena Khan as the head of the FTC. There's some bright spots in his administration. Uh, but I don't really support uh, a government that provides cover for war crimes of another government. I don't support uh, the idea that we should be funding the war crimes of another government. Um, so. I know this is a little bit of a tangent, but real curious, Cenk, what would you do in this scenario? Yeah, so first of all, new polling out shows that 68% of Americans say ceasefire right now, ceasefire. Uh, the, our government should be pushing for that. And that's polling at about 30 points higher than a non ceasefire. So uh, the American people are super clear about it. No, it's actually way more than 30 point advantage in that direction. And then among Democrats, they're saying don't spend send any more money to Israel. He's lost the Democratic Party, so as always, he's out of step. So what would I do? There's no way in the world I would send another 14 billion dollars so that the bombs that are dropped on innocent Palestinian civilians could say made in the USA on them. No way. And in terms of the overall funding for Israel, I would cut every single cent. So I'm super happy to bring it back. I'll double it. I don't mind as long as we have a peace solution. We have two states. Uh, we end the occupation, but until they end the occupation, until they end this bombing, uh, they need to end both. I would not send another cent. Why are we, we, so now Joe Biden says, and all these politicians in Washington say, we don't have any money for paid family leave. So if you have a, if you have a baby, you gotta head back right to work to, into the assembly lines or the coal mines the very next day, because we have no money. Your kids, they can't go to college because we have no money. Lower drug prices, we can and everything is no money, no money, no money. Oh, Israel would like to uh, like have, have go to war even more, kill more civilians. Oh, we got plenty of money for that. No, 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 no. We're gonna send it, spend it on the American people. We're gonna do progressive priorities. Guys, just aren't you exhausted from Joe Biden and every Democratic leader saying, I'm not gonna do what I told you. I'm not gonna do anything that you want. I'm gonna do the standard things that Washington always does. So what are we gonna get in a second Biden term? Is there any hope in a second Biden term? Nothing. So Trump's a disaster and would destroy the country and destroy our democracy. Biden, on the other hand, promises us literally nothing, nothing. Okay. He's made no campaign promises. So for God's sake, what the reason I got in this race, even though it's a long shot, is because you need another choice. You need another option. You need someone to say loudly and aggressively, God damn it, for once represent the American people and represent Democratic voters. Shouldn't every Democratic candidate be speaking like I am? How come I'm the only one talking like this? Everybody else is whispering. No, get, the, get Biden out of the race, you gotta go. Jankforamerica.com, and I want everybody to know, remember, will you see me either here or in any other interview, wherever you see me, if you like something that I'm saying and you wanna back me, jankforamerica.com, and wait till you see the news we're about to tell you, the good news about Arkansas. And Anna, there's an extra twist of that we just found out, that's amazing. Okay, Jank, so um, let's calm down for a second. You're a little too animated right now, <laughs> okay? Um, your second objective, I'm just gonna say it for you so we can get through this interview in time. You're, you're trying to uh, ensure that naturalized citizens are able to run for president. And I think that that is the most noble part of what you're doing. I think that um, that's an important thing to pursue. And to be quite frank with you, I've, I've always felt like that's a long shot, but you're starting to see some really interesting movement. So. Unfortunately, you didn't have a lot of success in New Hampshire. Can you just briefly explain what happened there and then move on to what happened today, the great news out of Arkansas? Yeah, so the first two states that had applications were Nevada and New Hampshire. 
And just out of complete luck, on their forms, it had the natural born clause in it. Most of the forms for most of the states do not have that clause. Now, you'll see the difference in Arkansas in a second. But because they had that clause, I had to strike out natural born and say I am eligible constitutionally, but I could not sign my name to saying that I was natural born here because that would be perjury. So we go to New Hampshire and we say, Guys, this is for the courts to decide. The FEC has a ruling. This is really, really important. The FEC has said that nationalized citizens can run for president. They say whether they could serve as president is up to the courts. But as far as the states are concerned, they must let me run. And New Hampshire said, we don't care. We don't care about the FEC. We don't care that you're right. And then I said, well, guys, the form itself is wrong. You cited actually the wrong part of the Constitution. And they said, "Oh yeah, oops. And we said, okay, well, then if I crossed out that part, in fact, everyone who didn't cross out that part committed perjury, could I cross out that part? And they said, yeah, you could. I said, so wait a minute, <laughs> you're saying I am allowed to cross out things. You just didn't like the part that I crossed out. They're like, well, yeah, technically our job is to just see if you cross out any part of the form. But basically they admitted we would have cheated for the other candidates and let them cross out parts of the form. And then by the way, and then they added salt on the wounds by admitting, yeah, if Ted Cruz lied about whether he was a natural born citizen and just signed it, whether it was true or untrue, we would have let him on the ballot and we did let him on the ballot, even though the courts never tested it. So if you lied, you would have gotten on the ballot. But <laughs> if you told the truth, you don't get on the ballot. And other people are allowed to cross things out, but I'm not allowed to cross things out. So it's absurd and it wasn't their decision to make in the first place. It let me on the ballots and then let the courts do their job. And one of the things that the courts look at is how do the voters vote? So if the voters vote for me, that makes a giant difference in being able to win that case. And Anna, you're right, 25 million naturalized citizens. And every one of us hears dozens of times in our lives, ha ha, you can't be president. That seems like a minor thing, but it isn't guys. It, what it is is what we hear every time is, ha ha, you're a second class citizen. You're not really American, you, you can't be our leader. You can go die for the country. And there's like 70 Medal of Honor winners who are naturalized citizens. But sorry, you can die for us, but you can't lead us because you're a second class citizen. We're gonna take that to the court and I've shown it now a number of times, 14th Amendment. It says all persons born or naturalized have due process and equal protection. They didn't say kind of equal, they didn't say equal with an asterisk. And they literally put the word naturalized in the 14th Amendment, which amends the earlier part of the Constitution. We're gonna win this case. We're gonna win so many things in this campaign, and today we started in Arkansas. So so good news out of Arkansas. What, what, what was different about Arkansas that allowed for you to make it on the ballot? Yeah, so first of all, I wanna thank every donor, supporter, volunteer that we have. It wasn't just me, it was our team. But yes, today we got on the ballot in Arkansas. And that's a little bit of history, We, I am, the first naturalized citizen on a presidential ballot in US history. It's amazing. And I didn't just do that. You you guys, if you're out there and you supported me at jenkforamerica.com, you did that. And there's no way in the world I could have hired the staff, I could have done all the things that I needed to do to get on that ballot without you guys. And actually, it's just a lovely story. This The audience has seen Devaria. My compliance person, she's the first person to sign up. She happens to be African American. We needed somebody from the campaign to go to Arkansas and hand in the papers in person. That's the rule that Arkansas has. So she did it and she did it at Little Rock. And she advanced the cause of civil rights as an African American woman in Little Rock. That is powerful and and I love that story. She was very proud to do that. And I'm super proud of my team. We already made history today in Arkansas, but we're gonna keep on making it. We're gonna get on a lot more ballots. And and that, by the way, that's exactly why we need the resources to do that. That's why I keep mentioning jankforamerica.com because those resources help us to get on more and more ballots and to win that Supreme Court case. But Anna, right before I came on, I found out something else too about what the DNC is doing in Arkansas. So apparently someone at the DNC called the Arkansas State Democratic Party and said, don't let them on the ballot. 
So that is the Democratic Party. They're so pathetic, unbelievably pathetic. Sorry, I just, is there anything more pathetic than the Democratic establishment? I mean, impotent, like losers to say the least, fighting to keep you off an Arkansas ballot. But anyway, sorry, that's my opinion. What what did you want to add to that, Jenk? So they apparently called and said, keep him off the ballot. And the state party said no. Um, wow. uh, the, that's the job of the courts. Our job is to follow our laws and our rules. So it, an incredible thanks uh, and, and gratitude to the Democratic Party of Arkansas for doing the right thing and imposing the pressure that the Democratic Party is putting on them at the national level. But think about that. That is the Democratic Party, the DNC saying, we would like you to discriminate against this guy. Even though the FEC has ruled that he's allowed on the ballots, even though you have decided that he should go on the ballot. We're asking you to break your rules because we don't want naturalized citizens to run. We, those 25 million naturalized citizens, we think they should be second class citizens. That's the Democratic Party. That's the Democratic Party. I can understand the Republican Party doing that. The Democratic Party doing that is unconscionable. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, Anna, so. These guys, Joe Biden will not go out and campaign. He won't He won't say anything about me. He won't say anything about anybody else in this race. And he won't say anything about Trump. But he sends his minions in the dark of night to go shiv people and to stab them in the back and to say, oh yeah, this is good. And understand why that is so damaging. Because if you campaign publicly, you convince the American people, you convince the electorate, and you get them to come to the Democratic side. That's what you're supposed to do as someone campaigning for president. You're supposed to make our case for us. He says, I won't do that. I won't convince the American people, and I'm sitting at 37%, and it's a near guaranteed loss. I'm gonna run this ship right in that iceberg. but. I will prevent anyone that can help you from getting on that ballot. I will fight dirty when no one else is looking. And then I'll go around pretending I'm regular Joe from Scranton. Brother, you haven't been in Scranton in 50 years. You're Joe Biden from Washington, one of the biggest establishment figures that has voted for every war, has been one of the most conservative Democrats of my lifetime. And let's be honest, one of the most corrupt Democrats of all time. The amount of money he's taking, he has he took nearly $150 million in dark money packs. Joe, where's the money? Where, who did you take it from and who do you serve? One of the giant chunks of money comes from a petroleum company. Gee, I wonder why he approved all the pipelines. So Jenk, we got- So we're just supposed to let that guy run the place, but not even campaign. Final question for you, you've got 30 seconds, we gotta wrap up. So. Are you seeing any movement in regard to encouraging other people to join this race and challenge Joe Biden in the Democratic primary? Well, well, look, so we've got movement, we've got momentum. Now, but at the end of the day, the rest of the governors are not a profile in courage. I mean, Gavin Newsom's like tiptoeing around, looking Good. inside he, the room. He should, he should not only tiptoe around, he should get out of Dodge immediately. Um, but yeah. move on, who else? No, but my point is, these guys, whether it's, I, I want all of them to come in the race. I don't mind a strong primary, I'd love a strong primary. Uh, but they're all afraid of Joe Biden, what does that tell you? So look, Newsom, Whitmer, Shapiro, Pritzker, all these Democratic governors who are very popular in their states, either get in the race and show some courage and knock this guy out and actually beat Donald Trump or never come into politics. I don't wanna see Gavin Newsom coming in 2028 when he wasn't here when the party needed him. So if you think we need another alternative, but you're not sure about me or Marianne or Dean, well, you should be furious at those Democratic governors. We're like, oh, I don't know, Joe Biden didn't give me permission. Are you a leader or are you not? And if you're not a leader, don't come around here in 2028, we don't need you. All right, well, to learn more about Jenk's campaign, please visit jenkforamerica.com. You can also follow him on Facebook at facebook.com slash official, Twitter at Jenk Uger, same for Instagram at Jenk Uger. Jenk, thank you for giving us an update on your campaign. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, and don't lose track. We got it on the ballot in Arkansas. We made history today. That is great news. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Anna. Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member. And members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence. And that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become 
one of the Young Turks.